Hey everyone, we are on part two of Knowing God's Will, and as a reminder, we are not doing a series about how to find out God's will, like, you know, pray, talk to some counselors, uh, read the Bible, etc. We are doing a series on the five, or five, I'm sure there's others, attributes of God's will. What does that mean, attributes of God's will? It means that when, when you are walking in God's will, when God shares His will with you, and you're going through that that journey, right? Um, because, and by the way, his will is not, that just came to mind, his will is not just one thing for you. Okay, I want you to be at the top of that mountain. No, his will is the journey of, I'm going to take you there, right? So let's start here, let's go there. And over time, you keep saying, okay, God, it was your will for me to turn right or turn left as I'm zigzagging up this mountain, right? So it's a process. But anyway, what we're talking about are the attributes. So when that happens, when he calls you to something or calls you through a process or a season, what are some things that are probably generally true about, you know, that that calling his will anytime? You know, pretty much anytime. Yesterday what we talked about was the first attribute is that you're going to get weak, okay? You're going to go from independence to dependence. Um, and that And that was true. For Abram, who became Abraham, uh, and that's the story that we're really zeroing in on, but it's also true for Joseph, right? He had to go to prison first. Uh, it's true of David. He had to get chased by Saul. It's true of Moses. True of Jesus. He had to go 40 days in the desert not eating. He had to hang on a cross and die, right, before he was raised up uh, to sit at the right hand of the Father. So uh, weakness uh, to, you know, from your strength to weakness, from independence to dependence. And then and then the fun one today is that we're now going to go from that weakness back to strength. And, and here's the simple idea. Uh, it, it, there's not a lot to say about it. It's very simple, but it's very powerful. When God calls you to his will, now you've got to wait for it. You've got to have the patience and perseverance to get to it. You're going from the promise to the palace. You've got to go through the process. But what you can know in God's will is that at the promise you know, there is going to be strength because here's what's happening. We're, we're getting rid of the world inside of you that's run by you that you're the king of, self, getting rid of that, right? That's where you become weak. And then we're replacing that with him. And that's where you become very strong. He says, you know, uh, in, in our weakness, he is strong, right? So that's what we're talking about today. We're, we're in uh, chapter 12 of Genesis. We talked about verse 1 yesterday, which was God told Abraham, um, Abram at the time, leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family. So leave your strength. Leave everything you depend on. Leave everything that makes you independent. And go to a land I will show you. So go somewhere that you don't know about, right? And I'm going to make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous. You will be a blessing to others. I will bless, you. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt, and all the families on earth will be blessed through you. Now, what's really interesting is that in chapter 11, verse 30, God lets us know, this is like many years before chapter 12, verses 2 and 3, but that Abram's wife, Sarai at the time, she became Sarah, was unable to become pregnant and had no children. So this is essentially what God is coming to Abram and saying. Imagine, imagine God coming to you. Hey, uh, Billy whatever your name is, um, I want you to leave everything you know, everything that's made you safe and secure, go to a place that I'm not going to tell you about yet, and here's the promise. Even though your wife can't have any kids, uh, you're going to have ton, you know, you're going to have kids and then tons of descendants. I mean, the only reason I would go is either I've got great faith like Abram um, or who became Abraham or just out of curiosity, I'd be like, God, you know, I'd like to see how this is going to happen. I'd like to see how this is going to play out. This is going to be really, you've got a sense of adventure. But the point is that in every one of these stories, including Abraham's, God took people from a place of, of their own strength to a place of weakness to a place of strength again. You know, strength because of him. Get, and that's how we bring heaven to earth. That's how we bring heaven to earth. Heaven's got to come first in us to go out through us to the community around us. But heaven cannot come into us if we are not first emptied of ourselves. So step one was empty you know, us of ourselves. Step two is fill us with heaven, and then he can go out to the world around us through us. So that, that's number two. That's it. 
Number two, attribute of God's will to encourage you and give you hope because you might not be there yet is that God wants to do great things in and through you. And he's only making you weak to make you strong, right? He's only making you weak so he can fill you up with him and do amazing things through you. So be encouraged that as you're going through this weakness, he's going to do great things if you will persevere, uh, keep going, uh, have patience, and get to the other side of that promise to the palace is the process. All right. Thanks for today. We'll look at part three tomorrow.